one of the questions that I have been contemplating, that I have been cogitating over the last few weeks is how do you heal your kidneys? So in this video, I'm going to talk about what I personally have tried. So to give you a quick, a quick synopsis, um, I did a dehydration for a photo shoot, for a bodybuilding photo shoot, get you looking lean and vascular. Um, unfortunately, afterwards, I did notice some bubbles, quite a significant amount of bubbles in my urine. And uh, I noted trace amounts of protein when I tested it. So the first thing you need to do if you want to uh, stop, if you want to heal your kidneys, is stop damaging them. So um, that's like pretty obvious, right? But stop doing the things that are harming your kidneys. So no more dehydration for photo shoots and yeah, really putting a massive strain on your whole body and especially the kidneys. Um, so yeah, no more of that. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm reducing my protein from um, 300 grams. I'm taking it down to around 250 grams. Not a big reduction, but I am still kind of being a competitive powerlifter. And um, yeah, uh, I am splitting my protein up throughout the day into the doctor that I work with recommended five to seven portions. So I'm splitting my protein up throughout the day and uh, reducing it a little bit. Um, another thing I'm doing is I'm stopping using nephrotoxic drugs like EQ, bold, otherwise known as boldenone or um, equipoise. Uh, this is a steroid used for horses and camels and dogs and all this type of stuff. Um, and I'm also stopping using anavar, which is metabolized by the kidneys, not the liver. Uh, one of the only orals to do this, maybe the only oral um, that is metabolized by the liver instead of the kidneys. So yeah, stopping with those two and I'm not using Tremblone or other nephrotoxic steroids. I'm keeping it to testosterone and human growth hormone and leaving it bioidentical for now. Okay, um, next thing I'm doing is I'm looking at what other drugs I'm taking which are causing um, kidney problems. So this means supplements, like looking into like the supplements I'm taking, is this safe for kidneys? Um, other pharmaceutical drugs, like, you know, I do use beta blockers on occasion. Are these good for, for um, your kidney health if you already have kidney damage? Um, and then you also have illicit drugs, which, you know, people shouldn't really be taking, but if you are taking them, before you take them, you need to consider whether these are having an impact on your kidney health, because you could be messing yourself up pretty bad, just fueling the fire, you know, uh, don't do that. Okay, the next thing, processed food. Um, apparently processed food is not good for the kidneys. It's just inflammatory in general. Um, then, you know, sugar is meant to be pretty toxic. There are a lot of people saying that you should be keto for, uh, to help kidney health. These people cite type two diabetes and pre-diabetes and metabolic disorder, um, as being the key promoters of kidney injury. Um, they say that sugar in the bloodstream is highly toxic for the kidneys and is damaging for the blood vessels and all this type of stuff. So they recommend low sugar. Whereas the standard of care does recommend having um, a massive amount of carbs, I think 10% protein and uh, a very small amount of fats as well. So these two are orthogonal to each other. They are totally juxtaposed. Um, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I would like to lean more to the keto with like vegetables and fruits added in. Uh, I have reduced my amount, the amounts of processed food I'm eating um, quite largely, but that is what I'm doing. I've reduced the amount of carbohydrates that I'm eating um, and yeah, try, just trying to eat a bit cleaner. Um, I don't have severe kidney problems, but this is what I'm doing to tackle where I'm at right now. Okay, um, so what can what kind of act 
protective measures can you do to assist things? Uh, you, you know, that you can use to reduce the rate of degradation or maybe even repair, possibly. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is rehydration salts. I historically, for the last couple of years, have struggled to get, you know, a light colored urine um, and my urea on my blood tests has always, is usually quite elevated. So I do struggle with getting adequate hydration, even though I drink quite a lot of water. So uh, the doctor that I work with, he's recommended adding uh, rehydration salts to my diet. He even recommended adding squash. Like, you know, and I'm not too sure about having all this extra sugar in my diet. I'm not sure it's what I'm really wanting in my life. But anyway, he recommended adding squash. I have bought some keto style electrolyte salts. I bought a big um, pot of the powder because it's more efficient than using the tablets, which are, and the sachets that get pretty expensive. Okay. Obviously, hydration is going to help with the kidneys um, and general health. So, yeah, get my urea down, get my kidney markers back up. Okay, next thing is uh, cardio. That's right. I, as a power lifter, have started doing cardio. Now, fortunately, the coach that I'm working with right now is a bit more sensible in some regards than my old coach. Um, my old coach had banned me from doing cardio, said it would take away from my strength and gains. I mean, my legs might be knackered, my arms might be a bit more fatigued, and I might not be able to perform as much, but health is kind of important. And um, yeah, I have started doing cardio, which is great. I figured out a way to do it even with a knee injury. And um, yeah, this is good. So regarding kidney health, there is a link between heart health and kidney health. And generally, if you can increase the health of one, the other may follow suit. So this, you know, speaking kind of from what I know, the cardiovascular fitness will increase, um, I don't know if it'll increase blood vessel proliferation. I, I do know that it reduces blood pressure that's for sure. My blood pressure has gone down a bunch since starting this protocol. One thing to bear in mind is I am still powerlifting. So I am doing heavy deadlifts, heavy bench press. Currently, my squat is coming back up after a minor quad tear. Um, but yeah, I'm lifting heavy, I'm maxing out, and this is not really good for your blood pressure. When you have high blood pressure, this forces the blood into the nephrons or the blood vessels around the nephrons in the kidneys. I'm not entirely sure on the anatomy. And basically that high blood pressure can damage those very, very tiny blood vessels where the, the kind of um, waste products are getting kind of forced out of like, via high pressure filtration. And um, these are really delicate organs and yeah, high blood pressure during those lifts could damage the uh, the nephrons or the blood vessels and the nephrons or whatever it is. The delicate high blood pressure could damage them. So doing the powerlifting may not be the most sensible thing. But anyhow, for now, I'm coping with this. So I'm going to monitor and see how it goes. Next thing we're talking about is grape seed extract. Um, I wasn't really aware of this beforehand, but uh, grapeseed extract seems to have quite a myriad of benefits when it comes to kidney health. Now, I do know that it can lower blood pressure um, in the kidneys and generally you know, in the whole body. It can reduce blood pressure. Um, it also reduces oxidative stress within the kidneys. And it also reduces inflammation within the kidneys and all throughout your body. So this seems to be like a pretty good supplement. It's meant to be good for like skin, hair, nails, all that type of stuff as well. So yeah, I've incorporated this into my uh, protocol in the morning on an empty stomach. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Next is fish oil. Now I have been a consumer of fish oil for some time, but um, yeah, it's great because it is meant to be significantly beneficial for kidney problems. So the omega-3 fatty acids found within fish oil reduce the inflammation within the kidney and just enable it to kind of be in a state where it can repair 
and be healthier. Um, I personally go for the liquid fish oil because capsules are just less efficient, right? So I look for one with a high amount of EPA uh, in it. Your DHA and EPA, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, I look for the high amounts of EPA and um, yeah, I just glug it down. I didn't really like the flavor at first, but one of the benefits, I do like it now, I, I don't mind it. Anyway, one of the benefits is that um, you can actually taste if it's rancid. If your fish oil is rancid, it hasn't been stored properly, uh, then it's actually not good for you. It can cause lots of oxidative stress and inflammation. So yeah, it is good to check if your fish oil is fresh or rancid and also to keep it in the fridge once you've purchased it. Next, we got vitamin D. I have been a habitual user of vitamin D for some time now in the supplemental form and I do work outside so I get my tan on where I can on, you see. Vitamin D deficiency causes an increased chance of albuminuria. Albuminuria! Um, this is what I suspect I have. I need to do a urine analysis to uh, confirm this, but it's when you get albumin leaking into the urine um, through bad filtration of the kidneys. So yeah, if you have a deficiency in vitamin D, this can increase the chances that you will succumb to this problem. Okay, next one. I was quite surprised at the amount of benefits that reishi mushroom is purported to have when it comes to kidney health. The reishi mushroom can help reduce the permeability of the kidneys to protein. Um, it does this by helping stop or slow down the erosion of the nephrons, these tiny delicate tubules within the complex of the kidneys. Um, this helps in turn to reduce protein urea. Uh, it also, the reishi mushroom also reduces inflammation and fibrosis. Uh, when you have kind of damage to an organ like the kidney, um, you can get fibrotic scarring, which is dysfunctional. And that area of the organ has a lower capacity, a lower efficiency when it comes to doing its job. So we don't want that. So I was quite surprised at all these reported benefits of the reishi mushroom. So I've incorporated it into my regime. I take it three times a day and uh, who knows, hopefully it will have an impact. Um, the next one is astragalus root. So astragalus root. This comes highly recommended within the bodybuilding, um, powerlifting, no, more just bodybuilding, within the bodybuilding kind of YouTube bro science doctrine. Uh, astragalus root seems to be one of the main kind of herbal remedies that people are using to help improve their kidney function. Apparently it helps by increasing blood flow I also believe it is an antioxidant. I prefer to use the astragalus root powder. I buy it in one kilo bags from Amazon. And this is a far more cost-effective way of getting in the high dosages that bodybuilders recommend. So I'm using currently maybe nine grams a day, and I split that up into three scoops. Uh, I actually dry scoop this because it, the, the one I have right now has quite a bit of flavor and it's the easiest way to get it down. I don't like chugging it in a drink. Uh, somehow dry scooping works for me. The drink just makes me gag. So um, yeah, I dry scoop the noxious powder. It's not that bad. The, one, the first one I had was actually pretty sweet. It tasted kind of chocolatey. This one's like more bitter. Who knows which one's like more efficacious the bitter one or the sweet one mm, bitter things are usually good for you so hopefully the one i got now is doing a good job um but yeah astragalus root uh highly promoted by bodybuilders and yeah that's been a staple of my um supplement regime for some time because i have been worried about kidney health because my urine has been so dark 
for a good couple of years now. So here we go. The last kind of nuclear option, getting a bit experimental here. Um, the last option that I'm going to talk about is B733. Now, this is a peptide um, that you have to inject subcutaneously and it kind of circulates throughout your body and does its job. I have seen papers and supplement companies or peptide companies marketing this or reporting studies into this uh, B733 peptide that say it can help reduce fibrosis of the heart, lungs, and kidneys. It's all a bit sketchy <laughs> because I don't think there have been human trials yet. So um, it's definitely been tested on rats. I've seen uh, reports of studies where they've tested it on rats. Basically, this B733 it is a synthetic, more cheaply um, produced form of relaxin. Um, relaxin is given to women during pregnancy or they produce it naturally uh, during pregnancy. It helps relax all the muscles and the soft, what's called smooth muscle. Um, it helps relax all of the muscles and get that baby out. You know what I mean? Get it out. Um, so when it comes to fibrosis, I've seen papers talking about this peptide releasing, causing the release of an enzyme which helps to break down collagen. Now, as the scar tissue is made of collagen, it makes sense how this could help with fibrosis because scar tissue is formed of collagen. I am a bit weary or worried about other side effects that may come along with global collagen decomposition. You know, I've already had one bicep tear. Who knows what it does to your blood vessels and all that type of stuff. I don't know, but I have tried it. Um, another way that this helps to improve kidney function is it is a vasodilator. And I can report, yes, it is a vasodilator. Um, it definitely is. I got so veiny and like, I look crazy when uh, I was taking this peptide. I did run into a number of problems, which I will cover in a subsequent video. Um, yeah, I did experience some side effects from this peptide. On the internet, there aren't clear dosing recommendations and this type of thing. It's a very sketchy compound, which I have tried and I will document fully in a subsequent video. So that about sums up what I have been doing for my kidney rehabilitation protocol. It's quite an extensive list. The first thing, stop doing the things that are damaging it. Stop doing crazy amounts of dehydration. Reduce the protein, split it up into multiple chunks throughout the day. Stop using Anivar and Equipoise and don't use Trembolone people, unless you really need to and you like it. But you know what I mean, watch out for them kidneys. I, have <laughs> I am looking at other drugs and supplements that I'm using, making sure they're not negatively affecting the kidneys. I am reducing sugar and processed food and eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. Okay, next we've got the active recovery things. I am having rehydration salts, trying to get my urea levels down. I am doing cardio every day in the morning to help with blood flow and blood pressure. I'm using grapeseed extract, fish oil, vitamin D, reishi mushrooms, astragalus root, and I have used B733 peptide. So I hope that is informative to you. You can follow me on Dave underscore squats on the Instagram. Uh, you could help me out by liking and subscribing to this channel. And until next time, I will see you later. Peace.